Hare Krishna. Yeah, the Bhagavatam is in that regard very important for devotees because it explains how um, the perfection of life is um, reached and what the perfection of life is. It's not just a philosophical book, what is the absolute truth, what is God. It's also explain, it explains to us how to attain Krishna and it gives examples of those who achieved this most amazing goal. And exactly in this part of the Bhagavatam and exactly this uh, verses describe this perfection as Prabhupada also said here in the purport the perfection of yoga therefore does not terminate in voidness or impersonal this impersonalism on the contrary the perfection of yoga is attained when one actually sees the personality of God this is the perfection and here we hear about Karda Mamuni who achieved this perfection which is very amazing he got the darshan of Krishna himself and the Lord is very nicely explained. And Prabhupada said here in the purport also, this is not imagination. Because someone would, would say, nobody knows how God looks like and more or less to really understand how good God looks or, or let's say like this, you cannot really know so you can imagine. Yeah, you can imagine. And in, in this tradition, they imagined God looking like that and this was kind of their imagination because actually God has no form and maybe he can take on any form he likes or you know, just imagine what you want and Prabhupada makes this point very clear that this is not imagination that this is actually the form of Krishna his eternal true form which is not coming from anything and Prabhupada mentions here in this purport the Brahma Samhita Chintamani Prakarasadma Sukalpa Vriksha Lakshavri Teshu Sura Bira Bibala Yantam Lakshmi Sahasa Shatasang Brahma Sevyamanam Govindam Adipurusham Tamahang Vajami, which uh, is the, yeah, a verse which describes the spiritual world and which, and the Shastra, uh, Shastra actually descriptions of the eternal reality. The scriptures are descriptions of the eternal reality. They are not imagination by some um, very, we are poetic and very intelligent writer. No. And the first canto, Srila Prabhupada refers to a so-called Vopadev. Maybe you remember it's in the first chapter of, in the first canto, uh, who was a, um, um, assumed by some to be the writer, the compiler of the Bhagavatam, a so-called Vopadev. There was a Vopadev actually. Yeah, this is not just an, some imaginary figure, but uh, he is not the writer of the Bhagavatam. And Prabhupada says that he, this is just modern understanding and they try to find, um, how to say, they want to reconstruct how the Bhagavatam and other religious texts were created, how it came about. And they can never accept a transcendental source because this is too far for, for, for them. This is not scientific and uh, so they have to explain it in material ways. But Prabhupada says it clearly, no, no Vopadev wrote the Bhagavatam. It was Vyasadev, as described in the Bhagavatam. So and Vyasadev himself had a vision of Krishna, as we hear also in the first canto. Uh, when Narada Muni instructed Vyasadev, um, write the Bhagavatam, he went into meditation. He sat on uh, the Saraswati river, he did some austerities, and then also and the culmination of his austerities, he had darshan of Krishna. And he saw the Lord, and he saw the material energy standing behind Krishna, and she was kind of ashamed. Actually, the material energy personified, she was kind of ashamed because she has to do this so-called unthankful task to put everyone into illusion. <laughs> and she was standing behind. Which also is significant, meaning that Krishna is in front. Krishna controls Prakriti, and Prakriti is not the producer of Krishna. Krishna controls Prakriti. Maya Prakriti, what is the first? Uh, Maya Dakshena Prakriti, Suyate Sacharacharam, Hetuna Niyakanti, Achagatvi Parivartate. He oversees Prakriti, he control, controls Prakriti. So, yeah, back to this uh, Brahma Samhita Shloka, where this Chintamani Dham is described. Chintamani is the spiritual energy. Prabhupada also translates it sometimes as touchstone or a spiritual element. 
And in the spiritual world, everything is built out of this chintamani, which means everything there is spiritual. Not like in our world where everything is material, temporary, everything has a cause. In the spiritual world, nothing has a cause. It's the causeless world. It's the spiritual world. And there Krishna is in the center, surrounded by Sahasa Shatta Sangbrahma Sevya Manam, um, by the thousands of Lakshmis who are actually gopis, right? And they are serving him with great, in great awe and reverence and with uh, love. And what, is, what else is there? There are many trees, wish-fulfilling trees, kalpa vrikshas, and surabi cows. And this is the highest supreme reality. And this is already fixed. This is not imagination. This is not some... It's a, actually a wonderful idea. Just from a material point of view, it would be a very nice idea to envision God like that. In, in one sense, if someone... This is a very nice vision. Hmm? But it's not an idea by someone, it's reality. Yeah. And it yeah, conforms in that sense to the highest aspects of aesthetic. What could be more beautiful than that? So, and in the Brahma Samhita also it said, Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigra Nadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. Yeah, so, Krishna does not have a cause. He is the cause of all causes and he is the beginningless beginning. Even Aristotle, who was a uh, disciple of Plato, who was a disciple of Socrates, so they have also some parampara there. Um, Aristotle also, he was arguing for the existence of God. And his argument was, it's a so-called um, uh, cosmological argument, that God is the unmovable mover. He said there has to be something someone who moved everything and he has to be unmoved because if he is also moved, if he has also a cause, we would never be able to find the answer to these questions because you would end in a so-called infinite regress. Yeah, if you want to understand what, what is this and if you have to always understand it via the cause and the cause as a cause, you will never find out what is this. It's called infinite regress. He said there must be an immovable mover. And the same we have in our line of the Brahma Samhita. When it said anadir adir. It's called said, the beginningless beginning. Krishna is the beginningless beginning. He has no beginning. He has always been there. There is no time when he got, was created. And this is already an amazing aspect of his. That he has always been there in the spiritual world. And at times he shows himself in the material world. That's me. Here I am. To, and if we wouldn't do that, we would go, uh, go on speculating and being in ignorance uh, forever. Yeah. So we need this uh, revelation of, of Krishna to understand him. Yeah. Yeah, so Krishna shows himself in the material world. So in this purport, Prabhupada focuses on these points, that there is no, um, there is no imagination in these descriptions, and that the perfection is for us to see Krishna himself. Yeah. So this is the perfection, this should be our goal. Everyone who is successful in, the, in, in life, in material or in spiritual, has a goal. This is a very important concept. If you want to be successful, and we use the understanding Krishna consciousness, we want to be successful, we have to have a goal. We have to know what we want. We have to know what, what are we, why are we doing what we do. It's actually said, people who are, what was it? I heard a number recently. But out of Oh, what was it? Only 4%. Oh, how was it? How was it? Sorry, I'm, I forgot. Anyway, those people who are really successful in life are those who every day, every day, write down their goal. <laughs> it's a very interesting point. They write down their goal. Uh, write down their goal every day. This is what I want. This is my goal. 
because I'm thinking now a little bit about this. It's called goal setting. And goal setting means it's not just a vague idea, what sometimes occurs in your mind. It's very specific and you know what you want and you always think about it. And then you can attain it. And we should do this in Krishna consciousness. We should every day think about Krishna and I want to achieve Krishna. I want to be a devotee of Krishna. And what does it take to attain that? And when I heard about this principle more in detail, I, I understood a, 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 a paka sadaka, a good sadaka, he's really doing like that. It's an eternal principle. The karmis understood it also. And they use it in material ways. And it works very good for them. Because those people who do that, they become highly successful. Extre extremely successful, which mainly is defined through how much money they get. They know exactly what they want. They think all the time about it. They know what, how much they want to earn. They think out of the box. They, don't, they are not stuck. To, oh, I just work for my thousand euros a month and it will never change and I'm satisfied. No, they think big. <laughs> I want to earn 10,000 euros or 20 or 50 or 100 a month. And this is how I go there. I, I go there. This is how I attain it. And they work for it like anything. And they um, surrender to this goal. They surrender to this goal. I'm a servant of this goal. I, I, it, it, I cannot use my life just for my sense pleasures lying on the couch. No, I have to work very hard for this. This is very important for me. And the interesting thing is, it works. And but why does it work? Because it's a law of nature. <laughs> it's just a law of nature. But it's just misapplied. Rightly applied, it is, would be in spiritual context. And so we speak about the same thing in, in, in Krishna consciousness. We have the sadhaka, we have the sadhana, and we have the sadhya. These three things. The sadhya means the goal. The sadhana, how to attain the goal. The sadhaka, those who practice. And when you're attaining, when you're done, you're a sadhu. Then you're perfect. So, and the next thing is, okay, yeah, is any, you can say, oh, it's clear, yeah, I want to be Krishna conscious. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, I'm, you know, I'm in this temple and that's it, I, I, it's already clear. No, it's not, because it's highly individual. And it's not some idea which is put on your head. Yes, in the beginning we learn it, we get it on our head, but then it should become our own goal. I really want that. It's not just, yeah, because it's written in the book and I do because the others do. No, it should become our uh, idea, our goal, our desire. This is what Krishna consciousness is. And then it becomes very effective. In the last lectures I spoke about this, to become a conscious, what am I doing in any situation, especially before, when we start chanting our chapa. So often we thought we just do it because yeah, it's chapa time. <laughs> now it's chapa time, everyone sits down and or walks around, runs around like crazy, sticker flying. <laughs> like a race here, huh? Who's fastest around tools with laps we take time, huh? Who's fastest? <laughs> yeah. un we are very unconscious very often in many things we do. So a successful success means to become conscious of what you're doing and apply your desire. So, um, what I want to... Yeah, and the other principle we have also is uh, Sambandha Abhideya Prayojana. We always hear about this, Sambandha Abhideya Prayojana. Prayojana, again, is the goal, what you want to attain. Yeah? Abhideya is the practice, what you do to attain the goal. And Sambandha is the knowledge, Sambandha Gyan. Sambandha means what you links you, what connects you to this topic yeah? or to this goal. But it's only the theory. Sambanda, Gyan, knowledge. Yeah, so when I want to go from here to Munich, yeah, so Prayojana would be Munich, the highway would be Abhideya and the driving of the car, maybe you walk, but most of the time you, I prefer riding the car. <laughs> and Sambanda, Gyan would be study the map or put the dates, put the information in your GPS. Understand how to get there. And then you, with the goal, Munich. Yeah. 
So in Krishna consciousness we should, and with time it will become more and more specific. In the beginning, like in the army, Aaron does the same. There's like the Grundausbildung. Yeah, Grundausbildung. Everyone learns, learns the same, and then you become more specific. Or in university also, or in school. Everyone gets a general education, and then it becomes more and more specific. So in Krishna consciousness also, we join the temple, and there's like Bhakta program, yeah, everyone learns the same thing, and with time it becomes more and more specific, and it should become more specific, because Krishna consciousness is highly individual and personal. Yeah, we have personal movement, a meaning everyone should really want it from, because they want it personally, and they know what they want. How do I want to serve Krishna? How do I want to serve Prabhupada? Also with our talents, this should be also taken into account. And then becomes very uh, into, um, enlivening because <clears throat> you're engaged in a devotional service which you like, which you can do. And where there's success, there should be also some success. If you go out every day on book distribution and distribute no books for five years, to do that needs a lot of Krishna consciousness. <laughs> this is very success. If you can distribute five years every day, eight hours, not a single book. That means a lot of Krishna, a lot of detachment. <laughs> Most of the time we cannot do that. Who could do that? So unfortunately, we need some success, some reward. And Krishna is kind, he does that. Yeah? And Krishna wants that. Krishna wants to reveal himself, but we need to know how it works. We have to practice the proper bhakti. Because Krishna, actually Krishna is just waiting to show himself, like to Kardama Muni. Krishna is waiting for every one of us to finally engage with him in a personal relationship. Krishna wants to shake our hand like he did with Brahma. He wants to speak to us because he loves us. In the Bhagavatam, in the first canto, in the uh, second chapter, verse what is it, 17 or 18, Prabhupada says, Krishna wants us more in the spiritual world to come back to him than we wanted our own, uh, ourselves. He's really, and for me it's very amazing that he is like that, but he is the all-loving Lord. He's really interested in us. And he doesn't want us to suffer in the material world. And he wants us, he wants to engage with us. Yeah. So, so this darshan, as Prabhupada says here, is the perfection of our sadhana. And um, this needs a very sincere spiritual practice, because Krishna is not cheap. One, pre one, one quality of six qualities of bhakti is sudurlabha, right? Everyone heard about this. Right? Bhakti has six qualities, right? kleshagni, um, um, shubhada, what is it? moksha laguta krit, sandrananda visheshatma, krishna karshini, and also sudurlabha. And sudurlabha means it's very rare, and it's rarely attained, sudurlabha, right? Adur Labha. So Dur means difficult, Labha means attaining. Su, so very, very difficult to attain. Because Krishna, because Bhakti is the power which controls Krishna. And Krishna doesn't give it easily to anyone. We speak about pure Bhakti, pure devotion. Some Bhakti, yeah, he gives, we are practicing Bhakti, there is something, but pure devotion, he gives rarely because we have to be qualified for that. And how to become qualified? Through very sincere spiritual practice. Yeah. Kardama Muni, here, we hear here, did ten, what was it, 10,000 years of austerities. Of course, you can say, oh, it was in Satya Yuga, it's like we're short amount. <laughs> okay, but still, he lived, you know, People lived 100,000 years at that time, so 10,000 years or 10 times, 10% 10 of his lifetime. So for us that would mean 10 years, 10 years of austerities, but fixed, you know. He knew what he wants, the goal was clear, he was, he was completely determined. And then in, in this perfection he got the darshan of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. There's another verse in Brahma Samhita. Premanjana churita bhakti vilochanina santasa deva rida yeshu viloka yanti yang shyama sundaram achintya gunasvarupam govindam adipurusham tamahang bhajami. Where it said that the devotee whose eyes are uh, tinged with the salve of or 
Balsam of love of God, ointment, yeah, ointment of love of God, had prema. When they said prema, he sees Shyama Sundara, beautiful, dark, dark complexioned Lord, in his heart. Yeah. And in another verse from the first canto, I forgot the Sanskrit, um, it, it was spoken to Vidura. And he said, Vidura was praised being a person so powerful that he can transform any place into a holy place of pilgrimage. He was so powerful, like Prabhupada also. Prabhupada is also, where, you know, devotees glorify any place where he stayed. Any place he stayed, like in New York, we hear about the Tomskin Square Park and this tree, this is the Prabhupada tree and... These places are sacred and transformed by Prabhupada. Before it was a regular tree. Who cares about the tree? Thousands of trees everywhere in this park, thousands of trees. But now, no, this tree is very, very, very special. <laughs> yeah. Because Prabhupada was there. Without Prabhupada, it would be a regular tree. So it said, these devotees, they are so pure, they transform any place. They make a holy place out of any place. And why? Because they carry Krishna in their heart. A, a devotee is a devotee because he has Krishna in his heart. And then he can make a place into a holy place. Meaning any person is not a devotee. This quality must be there. Who has Krishna in his heart. That means devotee. So, and, and, and a devotee has Krishna in his heart. And he realized Krishna. has a relationship with Krishna. He loves Krishna. He serves Krishna. Pure devotee. And he, as Prabhupada said, he also in the end of the purport, he can, he preaches Krishna. Hmm? And why? Why can a devotee preach Krishna consciousness effectively? Because he experiences Krishna. It's, it's of course, a theoretical aspect is there too, but the more powerful aspect is his realization, out of which, and actually his taste. His experience of Krishna consciousness, and out of this he preaches, as we hear also. Tatvidi pranipati na prayprasnya seva upadekshyanti de gyanen gyanes tatva darshina. Because darsh tat gyanes tatva darshan tatva darshina. He sees the truth, darshan. He sees his darshan is saying means seeing. He sees the truth. He sees Krishna. So what we can learn for our personal life. The more we experience and see Krishna, experience Krishna, the better we can preach. Because it's not just theoretical, it's something what we really know. And in the Bhagavatam, there's also a verse where it said the sadhus, the enlightened ones, they preach according to their realization as birds fly in different heights. And I think you remember this verse. Yeah? So there are different birds with different capacity of flying. Like you have some sparrows, they more or less, you know, they hover over the ground. <laughs> okay, they go a little higher, maybe 10 meters, I don't know. Sparrows huh? don't go so high. But they are like eagles or vultures. They can go very, very high, thousands of meters high. And according to the realization, a sadhu can so to say fly. And according to this, he can, this he can preach. So every one of us has some realization, and according to that, we can communicate and explain Krishna to others. So in the pure devotee, as we hear here, he, and also like Prabhupada, Prabhupada very often said, actually, I see Krishna. There was once, I forgot the details of the dialogue, but he explained to some reporter, and this reporter asked something about Krishna, and it was not clear what Prabhupada meant. And this, the, the disciple explained, yeah, Prabhupada means that he, some theoretical answer, that why he speaks about Krishna. And Prabhupada said, no, because I see Krishna. <laughs> yeah. And for a pure devotee, this is normal to see, to experience Krishna. Yeah, so, and here we hear another episode where a devotee sees Krishna as a personal contact with the Lord. And uh, I was reading uh, yesterday 
the pastime of where, when Krishna was in Dwaraka. And then came a, a messenger. And the messenger was sent by some kings and came to Krishna who was in the court. Krishna had a huge court, a Sudharma assembly hall. Actually, this hall was given from the, was given from the heavenly planets. Dvarka was most opulent city, and in the center, I don't, know if, no, I don't know if it was in the center, but the place where Prabhupada met, uh, Prabhupada, Krishna met every day with his council and the other members of the Yadu dynasty, it was called Sudharma Assembly Hall. And every king, every kingdom has in his main city assembly hall, where the ministers come together, the kshatriyas, and many things are happening there. Uh, and then, and Krishna was sitting in this hall, surrounded by his ministers, Satyaki, who was his general, or Uddhava was there, and Vasudev was there, and Ugrasena, who was like the emperor, was there. And suddenly a messenger came into this assembly and brought a message by some kings. And the message was more or less, please, our dear Lord, save us. We are captured by Chara Sanda, who was a very powerful Kshatriya. And he treats us like animals, and he wants to sacrifice us actually to Kali. And many times you defeated him already. One time you ran away from him, but yeah, this was just your pastime. So please save us. And then they also say, a living entity in the material world is completely condemned to be in ignorance forever bewildered by your Maya and we need your appearance as an avatar in this world to diminish, to, to um, take away this illusion. And we are now kings in corpse-like bodies, they said, corpse-like bodies. We are like zombies, huh? <laughs> corpse-like bodies, convinced, oh, we are kings and we are the rulers of the world. And then uh, Krishna wanted to act, actually. He wanted to um, liberate all these kings. But then suddenly Narada Muni came in. And Narada Muni was described as being, as he also, Krishna has explained, uh, ex described as being effulgent like the sun. Also Narada Muni was effulgent like the sun. And a very interesting detail, he had hair like golden sun. Because we always see Narada Muni with black hair, but there was said, was said Narada Muni has golden hair. <laughs> golden hair. And Narada Muni said, oh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna uh, received him. Very often Narada Muni comes in. And then um, he, Krishna actually asked him, how are the Pandavas doing? Krishna asked him, that was the first question, he was interested, how the Panda was doing? And Narada Muni said, yes, King Yudhishthira desires to make, King Yudhishthira desires the sovereign rule over the whole world. And you wonder, hmm, Yudhishthira has some desire, he wants to rule the world, be emperor of the whole world. He said, yes, he wants to rule the whole world, he wants to make a Rajasuya Yagya, and he wants to that you come to this Yagya to be celebrated as the greatest personality of the world. And when I was reading this, I thought, this is interesting. He wanted to be the king of the whole world, but he wanted it for Krishna. And then I thought, this is interesting. We should also be, not we, some of us who is qualified, not, not me, but some of us should be the king of the whole world. For Krishna, the Kshatriya was... Uh, a representative of, of the Lord and he was seeing himself as a servant of the Lord and there should be a divine government which represents Krishna and Krishna wants that because Krishna arranged the whole battle of Kurukshetra that Yudhishthir becomes the king he wanted him to become the king yeah so and then he said okay what is not, and Krishna didn't want to go to the Rajasuya Yagi actually. He said the, the, the Yadavas, they prepared already, and Krishna wanted to save the kings. But then Krishna turned to Uddhava and said, what, what shall we do? We have here two missions. One is to save the kings, one is to go to the Rajasuya Yagya. And then Uddhava said, my dear Lord, this is so bewildering for me, not to find the answer to this problem. For me, it's bewildering that I know you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but you ask me for advice. Mm -hmm. 
This is very bewildering. That you put us all in illusion here, playing the role of a human being. So Nara Kriti. Nara Kriti, the one who acts like a human. It's the name of Krishna, Nara Kriti. So this is also interesting, that Krishna takes part in our social affairs, pretends to be one of us. And very often in the Bhagavatam, this is uh, said by devotees, also Queen Kunti, in her prayers to Krishna, also said, yeah, this is very bewildering. You pretend to be my uh, nephew, but you are the absolute personality. Yeah. So, and then Uddhava had this solution. Of course, we have to kill Charasanda, that Yudhishthira can do his sacrifice. So, everything is done in one act. Mm. Yeah. So, Krishna's pastimes are very... Um, so, but why is Krishna doing that? This is my last point. Why is Krishna doing that? Playing a role of you know, being like one of us. This is his pastime. This is his leela. And he enjoys that very much. He himself enjoys it. He does it actually for his, for our upliftment and even for our spiritual enjoyment. He plays a theater, more or less, to become, that we become attracted to him. And he is uh, yeah, a Leela avatar. He's Leela Purushottama. Actually, this is his name. Leela Purushottama. He's the supreme person who always plays pastimes. And this is not just that he does it in a material world, like the same, like the form of Krishna is eternal, but his pastime is also eternal. It's not that there is the border of material and spiritual world, and in the spiritual world he's God, and in the material world he has his leelas, and pretends to be a human, pretends to be a sage, pretends to be a fish or something like that. These pastimes are also eternal, they are also eternal in the spiritual world. So he wants to show us these wonderful pastimes that we, we become attracted. That we think it's way more interesting with Krishna than in the material world. And my imitation of his leelas is very uh, ridiculous. And we should just um, yeah, connect with him. And how do we do that? In absorbing our minds into the leela kata becoming more and more inspired and becoming out of this inspired to share with the others. And so this is how we, we uh, go back to Krishna, to become, to become Krishna conscious in this uh, way. Okay, Hare Krishna. Any questions, anything to add?